everything. You're alive. Greetings and hallucinations. Hello, Greg. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you doing, Keith? I am doing well. I see the uh, uh, beautiful painting. The Atomic Disintegrator. Work. The Atomic Disintegrator. Really looking forward to uh, watching your work on that, chatting with you today. Yes, uh, indeed. Before, before we get going, again, we want to make the announcement that the Marvel Art of the Brothers Hildebrandt book is back in stock. I see you've got your copy to show off to everyone. Here we are. We're showing you. See how the, the picture even, see the background? It fades out. The, the picture stays strong. How, yeah, right. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, so here's the book. It's substantial. IDW, beautiful job on the book they did. Fantastic job. And do we know we're selling it for what? Is that what we're leaping to? Yes, we are selling it for, what is it? $75 signed, and then I'll do a remark, one only. I'm just showing you for samples of this kind of thing that I'll do inside on the black paper, and I'll pick something and draw it in there, a character. And that's done with and like still one, one pen, and that's 150 for a remark. But the book, Fantastic. look at it, it's filled with color galore. I mean, it's, it's like fantastic reproduction of all the, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, it's got, it has all of the Marvel masterpieces, uh, the graphic novel, X-Men, uh, 2099 Oasis. Yeah. Or, uh, and it also has, uh, a lot of the Star Wars stuff that you've done. For posters. Marvel, right? Yeah. Right. I've done alone, you know, and then posters and, oh God, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Every visual up to the time that the book was printed. Fantastic. So everybody can pick their copy up at yeah. spiderwebart.com. Link is in the in the lower left hand corner of, of the screen there. Uh, so gets gets some people already chiming in saying hello to you, Greg. Greetings. Uh, uh, Dean already Dean wants to know what sound that gun uh, makes. Well, the actual real one here. I got it right here. This is where I did it from. <laughs> nice. the the atomic disintegrator and this was actually in reality here i'm gonna do the, the demonstration this little lever in the front here i gotta get this right to the camera you pull this and the thing falls out the whole trigger uh assembly falls out and you load up caps in here and, and oh, you nice. and, and you pull the trigger back to, to feed it through you know and you fill it push it back whoops there that didn't work quite so well Jeez, what do I do? I screwed it up. <laughs> there we go. All right, there. Screw it in. And then it shot. All it did was make bang, bang, bang. But the thing, the cool thing was smoke all came out of the barrel, which I'll be painting in here later, you know. There'll be smoke around. But yeah, in reality, I mean, I think Jean looked up, she did look up this on the internet and found out that at least in one of the low budget sci fi movies, black and white jobbies of the 50s, one of the spacemen was using one of these. That's awesome. Which they did here. I've seen, like, I think teenagers from outer space use this Buck Rogers jobby. Look up teenagers from outer space. I think they use this one. <laughs> which teenagers is a toy. It's really cool though. But these are, I got a whole bunch of, here's a Tom Corbett space cadet. <laughs> so which, what, what years, what years are those from? These are 50, early 50s. Tom Corbett was on TV and they did comic books. They were great com comics with painted covers, really nicely painted covers. And you got, this used to have sparks shooting out of it, I understand. Sparks that would shoot out, nice. I don't know what the hell this one did. Did something. Doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you could revital. You have quite the menagerie. What? You have quite the menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> These are just some of them. Those are just some of them. But the painted one, the atomic disintegrator, is, well, here we are. It's painted like 10 times up from actual size, probably. And then I was talking with Gene about it, and we talked. And then we said, so we're doing these um, NFTs, and I've got a line of them now with, of the puppets, right? So we were discussing yep. my other toys. And I'm going to start painting. I painted some of the other ones too. I painted some of the chalk figures I did. One of Uncle Sam, and and, and these guns, these these space guns. 
getting all the old texture of the metal now that's all aging and everything. And then she she has a skeleton upstairs. So she's, we, she suggested, hey, that would be cool to have the skeleton holding. You might want to spin that. You know, holding the... Yeah. Yep. Which would be... Oh so we went up. The skeleton's on a big rack, and it's very delicate. It's very old. You can't really clutch the hand, so you gotta you got to kind of like put it in all these different positions to get the lighting on it just right. You know what I mean? Each bone to make yeah. sure that it's lit right. And then what I did was... Uh, what the hell is it? I had a, we shot a picture. I don't know where it is. I thought I had it up. I, I, I held it, you know, just to see my hand holding it. And then I drew the skull, shot all the bone reference, and then drew the picture, drew the skeleton hand as my hand. You know what I mean? Extrapolating yeah, yeah. where the bones would be, you know? And so that's what I ended up with here. And so I, I, I'm going to be putzing around with this area, roughing in the rest of this, the uh, inside of the uh, the hand and, and some of the arm here. But so you you were mentioning the puppets, Greg. You know, so just to give people a, a, a reference point here, of what he's talking about. This is from a series that that you've called Kid Stuff. Yes. Right. And these are uh, some. Of the, it's some of the rare opportunity you have to paint uh, what it is that you want to paint, meaning that it's not not for a paid job, right? But that it is. Um, this is just being it. That's all. It's like something I feel like doing. I love to do. I love these things, and I just want to paint them. It's not a commission. It's I want to do it because I want to do it. And you. Obviously, you paint these typically in a, in a large scale format. Yeah. Um, so really get in and get the detail. If, if everyone if, that are watching here, if you haven't had a chance to look at um, Greg's Kid Stuff series, uh, you know, really look it up. You know, go to the website and, and check it out. The the work you did on the on the puppets that you've done so far is is magnificent, and. You know, seeing them on on the website or on a on a phone is one thing. You're only getting a, a small, little, tiny impression of these paintings. But when you see them live and you see them big, they they take on an entirely different different meaning. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because you you know, like people perceive them as extremely detailed. And that's only because they're so big. I mean, my painting technique is exactly like it is when I paint on any other picture. It's just that the objects are so big, you, you necessarily start to put more stuff into them. You know? Okay. There's more texturing going on. And from that point of view, when you zoom back from it or you reduce the picture, th then it looks intensely uh, photographic almost, right? Yes, but, but it, yep. what I like about it is if you get get up close and look at it, you, you can see it's painted. It's it's, it's yes. not, yep. it doesn't hold on to tightness. You can see there's brush strokes and loose stuff, accidental stuff that happens, and you know, it's all in there. But yeah, they they definitely take on that uh, almost photo real quality when you look at them. Dre Studio says that every piece is a commission just waiting to be claimed. That's true. Fair point. I like that. <laughs> I like that thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, the thing is, too, I was thinking about it as I do these things. I, I'm kind of like, I think we all are when, we, when we're painting on our own, not, you know, for commissions. Because the commission mm -hmm. is already, is it all right when I talk in my back to you? Can you hear me? Can you, yes. Uh, a commission, whatever, it happened to be private or for you know a publisher or whoever you already know it you you, you know what it is and so then you proceed to execute it you know you, you you have all the descriptions you have all your reference and you start to do it but when you're doing your own thing that's that's sometimes the toughest thing in terms of what should i paint you know i mean <laughs> you know yeah i used to walk around and bump you know once I got into that whole world of, well, I want to paint for myself, and I started painting my dream paintings, 
the first one being the one that Black Sabbath, Gene licensed to Black Sabbath for their Mob Rules album. And that came out of a dream. So I started painting some of my dreams and, or nightmares, if you will. They're symbolistic and, and surrealistic. And I used to then grope around for, okay, what's the next subject? And trying to find what it should be. And, and that's always like the thing. Where do you land with something? If you're interested in so yeah. much stuff, you know what I mean? If, you, if you've yes. been on a path of painting, you know, landscapes, well, then you know, and that's what you love and that's what you do. I, I you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. And, to, yeah. and, and, and so, like, for now, then I, then, I, then I just, but I just started the pinups. I started, that was my own, you know, gig. It, but it's reflective of something already from the past. Yes. You know? yep. now, what the hell do you do that's original? And and it, it becomes it could you fall into the trap I think possibly as an artist of w waiting for the ideal situation to arise in your mind and I, the ideal subject that like it's it's going to appear suddenly somehow either in how however it appears you're waiting for that thing to descend and say ah. That's it, the ultimate painting for me. You know, yeah. If that you, you find it, I finally get. I think that it's more for me like not that anymore. It's like you take what you're doing and make that the ideal situation in that moment. Okay. You know, have that yeah. conversation with yourself and make that be it. Yes. Still accepting that there's still more to come. When you're here in the moment, take that thing on and give it one billion percent of what the hell ever it is you have. Not, you know what I mean? And a lot of, I, a lot of yeah. times, I know myself that I probably hacked out something in the past because I'm always thinking of this big thing over here, and not this. Just get this out of the way, you know. That's a danger yes. to fall okay. into that. You know. You, you just yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. You look like a hack eventually. A hack. <laughs> like oh you know you, oh this guy purely just rushed this job yeah you know or, or whatever yeah uh, but that's a it's a very that's a good way to just you know I think avoid the artist block syndrome yeah uh, you know it's just do whatever's right there in front of you like what it, you yeah. Know, it, like, it, not not waiting for the ideal right there it is to show up and drop in your lap or drop into your mind just start with anything start. and out of that emerges yeah. something yeah you have no idea what may happen in your 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 thinking and realization as you proceed along that path with, with the thing that's directly in front of you in the moment you know something yes out of that that you never thought of before yeah, I've definitely started on one place and uh, ended up, you know, way somewhere else, you know, somewhere else better. But yeah, you got to put the one foot in front of the other yes. just to move forward. Uh, North Free, this is Greg, not Tim. Uh, and then the also the title of it is already the Atomic Disintegrator, because that is the actual gun uh weapon that is is on there is the atomic disintegrator these you put the word atomic on anything almost in the 1950s after the atom bomb that was the that was the you know that was a, you know look what they called the, the little tiny swimsuits ah it's a bikini because of the bikini atoll because of the dropping of the bomb on bimini and bikini the atomic bomb became kind of connected to calling the the bathing suit a bikini that was sort of in some way tied in with this new thing atomic energy you know and because it was dropped on bikini island yeah so i'm not sure what the connection was other than ah we can use the word that anything that's associated with the atomic bomb we can use and that's going to you know that'll grab attention rockets rocket and atomic two big words you know like okay o Oldsmobile had a variety of cars, of course, back in the day, and their theme was there's a rocket for every pocket. 
meaning the expense of the, each vehicle. But anyway, <laughs> I like this device here, this little knob. It goes from 100 to 500. You can't turn it on the toy, but no. it's permanently set at 375. I'm not sure. I was I was going to change it to 500, but I figured, well, no, that's your original. They must have some. Yes, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> Maybe that means that, something. Yes. <laughs> yes. But yeah, like yeah. how? Well, it's the atomic disintegrator. How many levels of disintegration? <laughs> well, apparently, 500 levels of disintegration. But yeah, 375 is enough to do the trick. Maybe that's what happened to this guy. You see, <laughs> it backfired on him. Yeah. I was yes. actually thinking, I'm not going to do it, but I was toying with the idea that you got, you know, like the, the, the superimposed optical effects they did, like in the 50s and then up into Star Trek, where you would, woo, like a thing, like he's being disintegrated, you know, the Martian ray gun would, out of, like out of War of the Worlds of George Paltham, where the, the, the general's yelling, everybody out. Everybody out, and he comes towards the camera, and the ray hits him, and he he glows green. You see his silhouette, uh, skeleton inside of his shaped body, and then you know the whole thing collapses. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, I think of the Chuck Jones um, renditions of uh, Daffy Duck when he does Duck Dodgers. Marsh, Marvin Martian, twenty third and a half century, I think it's what it is. Yeah, with Marvin the Martian and Marvin the Martian. Yeah, the disintegrator uh, guns. Marvin is cool. <laughs> I always like Marvin. So what what Sabbath are you listening to there, North Free? Are you listening to Mob Rules or one of the other albums? Um. So you know we were, you know we were talking before we went live here of, uh, you know the fifties. And you know that atomic age, and you, you live with constant parent fear of the bomb. Being, you know, the bomb's going to hit at any minute. The Russians are going to drop a bomb on us. I'm sure they live. They. I remember talking to an artist many years later from Russia. He said exact. We were just par comparing notes. He was my age, and I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. He said he would. They were getting exactly the same thing over there. There was this paranoia, this ink, this constant fear that there we were going to drop the bomb on them at any minute. And so we live with that. And in schools, you know, in grade school, you had the duck and cover. Was, that's famous now, you know. Yeah. You, you do those exercises and get under your desk like that's going to save you from an atomic bomb. But they had no awareness of it. Of the, I think one of the worst movies ever made, in my personal opinion, The Conqueror with John Wayne as Genghis Khan, was all shot. <laughs> John Wayne as Genghis Khan was all shot. Where in the state were they? Were they uh, where, where were they testing the bombs? New Mexico? Yes. It, yep. That's 90, 80, 50, 60, whatever the high percentage of the cast all came down with cancer. Nobody thought about it. No. You know? Well, it they, was, they didn't know. You didn't know. It was like you could watch, even like, in, I'm surprised that even with George Fallon, his technical knowledge that he had, with the people that he used, that there's a scene when they dropped a bomb on the Martians, the atomic bomb, there's all these people sitting in the foothills to watch the scene to see the Martians eliminated, which of course they weren't. And they're all staring at it and they're going like this, you know, looking at the bomb blast, which <laughs> there wasn't that, you know, but you the, live with the fear of this thing though, that any second was gonna drop on your head. And and then the films, right, that we were talking about before, yes. were all the invasion of the body snatches, were all about this, this commie, there's a commie in every closet and under your bed, and you, you know, they're gonna come and get you to put the pods under your bed and steal your soul and your body, you know? Very paranoid time frame, extremely, sort of like now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, everyone's a, everyone's a commie. Um, <laughs> the, it's, it, it's very interesting, you know, in that it's a very real fear in that now, you know, from that moment in time forward, with the push of a button, humanity can be completely and totally wiped out yeah dr strange that's that's a, that's a very real possibility yeah it has been for all this time and they they turned it into art with all of the different sci-fi films and then that in turn went to children's toys with yep. the atomic disintegrator <laughs> right there 
and that, you know, it's a cap gun that you're now painting, but the, the thought of it is, is real. Yeah. There is, it would be absolute atomic disintegration. Yes. Should it go down. And that it still exists today. It's still very, very real, but somehow we've all just come to live with it and put it in onto the back burner. And we only think about it when, you know, Kim Jong-un from North Korea or Iran start yeah, it, squawking a little bit. It, it's really weird. I and mean, when you think like the, 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 the astronauts came down from the space station the other day, it's almost like nobody, yeah. it, it doesn't mean you make some little tiny article in the back of the newspaper. Yeah, it didn't even <laughs> register. Yeah. Do, you, do you realize what the hell that is? The achievement that this, <laughs> it's like overwhelming, you know? <laughs> It's like they're absorbed with fucking gossip bullshit about politicians and shit. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah I'm sorry. Do you tell me that he's absolutely right? I mean, I, no, I'm, 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 I'm right there with you. Those are, in, in my opinion, those, they're the modern day explorers. You know, they're the, the, like the, you know, in the days of old, before they knew the circumference of the earth and they were jumping into those ships to sail around the globe. And they had no idea what they were going to run into. Yeah. Uh, well, that's not exactly what the astronauts are today. Yeah. But the, the only difference is, well, obviously there's many differences, but one of the big differences is the guy in the ship, he's commanding his ship. He doesn't depend on somebody hundreds of thousands of miles away to press a button and have this occur out there that makes sure that all the intricacy works in the, in the gravity and the land. It's like, that still boggles me. You know, was it a, a, what was the uh, what was the Apollo mission that that went wrong? Right around and the moon. They had to actually do the the mathematics. Was it yes. Apollo eleven? Yeah. They did the mathematics on board to figure out how to slink, use the gravity of the moon. Right. To that film shot the tanks back to Earth. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic yeah. movie. But, but duct, duct tape showed up in cardboard boxes and everything, right? Yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's those guys are remarkable. I mean, they're getting ready to, to uh, go to Mars. You know, hopefully a manned mission to Mars. That is, it's astounding. God, so and yet, cool. as you said, you know, people would rather pay attention to uh, trivia, TV, TV celebrities. Right. You know, it's very weird. I mean, granted, there are critical issues today. I'm, we're not denying that. There's no two ways about it. And they yep, <laughs> have to be faced and resolved and no two ways about it. But what I'm still saying is to overlook and have that be just a second article that nobody even knows that it even happened, you know? It's just, yeah. it's a weird, uh, jaded mentality, kind of, right? Yeah. Well, even the, the fact that a private company... A yeah. privately owned company is now sending people into space. That's how it was in George Bell's Destination Moon. When everybody, I remember yeah. seeing that, everybody said, oh, that's wrong, it will be the government. Well, no, no. right on with that. <laughs> of course, you ever see that one? That's the, that was one? George Bell's first film with the Chesley mm -hmm. Barnstall sleek rocket. You know, that kind? I've, yeah, no, I've never seen a film, no. Chesley Barnstall designed the moon set and when they started to construct it and constructed it, they constructed the floor. It's all in all the, you know, special effects books and everything. They made it look like it was all cracked land, beautifully reconstructed, yep. cracked landscape. All like, like, you know, all the big cracks and everything. And he came on the sense of, there's no water on the moon. Why is the cracks, you know? And they, and the, the the budget wasn't there, so they, they left it like that, and it's still like it was like that in the movie, you know. But <laughs> and, and and Pal were all freaked out about it. Well, Sharon Carson, thank you for correcting me. Uh, Apollo thirteen was Apollo the 13. mission that was yes. Apollo eleven was the actual should, mission that landed on the moon. See, we so. should here we are bitching about it. Not even we don't even know it. <laughs> Making other people wrong, and you know we're. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing here with this. Can you see this? Yeah. So you paint can you, the shadow color of the skeleton. This well here. I don't know if this. 
this is the skeleton color breakdown. Okay. So that goes from the highlight, which is yellow, medium, and white. Yellow ochre with white. Raw sienna with white. Raw sienna with purple in it. And then burnt umber in more darker purple to give a warm underside to the cool shadow color. So because yeah. you have to go through here. But does this mean anything? Yes. Yeah. Please keep going. <laughs> uh, so, um, and there, and there is the one thing I was, I was going to ask you. So, and you're, you just confirmed it, but um, you're you're sticking with the dioxazine purple as the. Uh, it, it's a mix of dioxazine purple, purple and ivory black. I take the dioxazine okay, purple so. to cut the edge of the purple, and mix it with ivory black. It's probably about a, a, a sixty percent ivory black and forty percent purple mixture. Okay. So tone it to get have it more. In in my sense, in my more realistic. Yes. Or whatever I was, that means. I was going to use the term. I was going to use the term natural. Yeah, more uh, naturalistic. Good idea. Yeah. In, in in reference to your other stuff like the Godzilla or the more comic book, which is more you know, co it comic has, booky. Yeah, it has that neon punch to right. it. Right. You know. Right. Uh, this is more toned down is, in the shadow region. Where okay. That where the highlight. The true highlight of the object meets the shadow area. It's just a little more toned down. But then for this hand here, the palm of the hand, the, the sunlight's coming here, the direct light's coming here, bouncing off this handle and back into this interior here. You can see it, the warmer. Yep. So you just take the, this color. You don't take the lightest color red because it's too light. You don't take the darkest color because that'll too, be too dark. You take a tone right about in here, which is cadmium red light with a little bit of white in it here. And you take this and you mix it with the shadow color here. And then you start to put that into the hand. After you put the shadow color down, then you put that down. So you've got, it's it's going from warm to cool. And now once you get into these undersides of the cool, you see there's, there's an underside to the cool shadow. You see that the cool shadow is a light source. It's just imagining ambient light, cool light coming from behind, just filling it all in. It's very dark, yeah. but nonetheless, it's all there. So you're painting into that shadow color with this warm bounce light. And then once you get into the underside of that blue, bluish, coolish shadow color, in the real mm -hmm. dark areas, it gets warm again. You understand? Yeah. Underside. Okay. So you got that yep. blue fill light here. But once you go underneath of an object under this zone, it warms up again. So it's a warm light, cool shadow, warm shadow under the cool shadow. Do you uh, see what okay. I'm saying? Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But into these dark areas, that gets warmer. When I say warmer, I mean it's like uh, bur burnt umber with. Uh, with a little bit of that black and ivory in it, or just plain straight burnt umber, is sufficient in this kind of a thing. It just seems to work. Okay. Good old burnt umber. It's kind of it... very cool. So, uh, yeah. To answer the question for Dre and North, yes, Greg puts his his paints out on uh, aluminum foil, but then stores them in the Tupperware container uh, for longevity. Like this. Yep. Just yep. Put it aside, clamp it down, and you can keep it wet. You know, you got a, a plant mister. Spray yep. it in the container, clamp it closed. It'll stay wet like that for months. You just come down. If you, it, I've used some of these colors on five paintings so far. Nice. Like th this, <laughs> this red was used on the, on the Godzilla painting. So, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I saved the color. I mean, you know, the, the paint is very expensive and it'll stay in these containers is, you know, you make sure you keep your piles of paint as you paint with them, not all merged together into a, into a mess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try to keep them succinct from each other without smearing them all into each other. And you can reuse them and reuse them and reuse them for other paintings. You know, very cool. 
cost-effective way. Nice. Yeah, well, what, what, one thing that I find interesting about this series um, that differs from, I think, every everything that you've ever done, and correct correct me if, if I'm if I'm wrong here, but this is the first series that you that that doesn't really have a background right where you've popped them against black now yep. in your typical work you know you use that background to help you know create a, a sense of a story and environment yeah. and all that but with these you've so centrally focused that subject matter that yeah. it is the story that's it that's all you need that's all there is and that's all i'm interested in and uh, the thrill of the picture is, I like, you know, here you get into really taking on surfaces of metal, old metal, and then with the puppets, it's that old comp composite and paint job all chipping, and you, you get to focus on that in the, in the moving of the, of the highlight, and it, trying to, to make it look like it's really light shining off that old metal into the shadow regions underneath it's just it's a kind of a mind trip of analyzing all that stuff mm -hmm. and there's constant analysis going on and i enjoy that that that's a fun you know, process you know yeah and yep. that's what i like about these things so you're you're, you're absorbed with that texture shapes you're sculpting these things big they're big like big sculptings you're seeing them front the sides you're feeling the whole thing you know as a, as a sculpting and that's the sense that i get and feeling that i get when i'm doing them as opposed to a whole illustration where you're telling this whole story and you're involved with this whole thing and you're you're dealing with keeping the, the, the landscape distance and, and the foreground uh, more intense and all these issues which are extremely enjoyable I, I like that too but this is a whole other gig this is just I don't know if I'm gonna make myself clear. It's enjoying the you are the the whole procedure of construct of, of making this object kind of come to life in a new way, you know? Yeah. It's an old thing yeah. laying around for God knows how long. And <laughs> here it is, it's kind of like morphed into some other, you know. You've yeah, you've like in, in the statement about the puppets, you're 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 creating a portrait of of that object. You're not just painting the object. You're making a portrait of the right, object. Exactly. You're, you're, you're elevating its status. Well, I guess, now, yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, but otherwise it becomes a prop, right? Right. Now yeah. it's it's it is so what it is. And it's like it's to me, they become face. like the puppets become real. They become real people, like those heads we were going last week and characters, yes. you know, yep. they're, they become, they have their own personality and well, this does too. I got, I got yes. that hand in there yesterday and said, Whoa, <clears throat> this looks like an old shadow cover to me, you know, from the pulp era. Yeah. They used to do a lot of these kinds of big skeleton hands on the covers and everything, which it has that kind of like nostalgic feeling to me, you know? It, it it does, but I mean, it also kind of reflects, you know, the, the statement in and of itself, the atomic disintegrator is certain death. Yeah, the uh, horror of the day. <laughs> and, you know, the, um, what is what is the phrase? If you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. Yeah. And, you know, you can look at that as, is that an animated skeleton, you know, that's... right using the weapon or you know has someone else use their atomic disintegrator on that person yeah right you know uh is it what is the statement about death and yeah and just that that age and that era of time you know that again going back to what we're saying that that constant fear um it, it, it was I, so a, I, it would, see here's reflect <laughs> what 
Sorry, Dean, Dean 13 says, if, if you live by the sword, you should have a really cool sword. I got a lot of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Got, we've got a lot of jeans. Jean likes swords. She collects swords. Yeah. And uh, we've got a ton of them. Do I you, do you one, have a, what? Sorry, go ahead, Greg. I designed I one once for the Franklin Mint called the Tolkien Sword. That's how they named it, just as a generic. It wasn't belonging to any particular character, but they just wanted the name. And I, we have, I got, I think we got two of them. The thing weighs like forty pounds. <laughs> I'll even lift it up. But I mean, you know. It's like, that's the other thing, but talking about that guy, I think it's a segue, but the 50s, you know, sword fighting movies, you know, the Black Shield of Falworth with Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. You could, the, yeah. they always did swords like this. You know, like they're made out of, how, what the hell they made them out of, you know, I made better ones. Yeah. That's how they sword <laughs> fit, all, you know, until Ben-Hur, not ben, uh, El Cid. You ever see El Cid with Charles no. Heston? No. Uh, it's, no. It's worth seeing. I mean, it really is. It's a okay. fant fantastic film for that time frame. You know what I'm saying? Shot in Spain. Okay. It's the first time they used real armor, real mail, and real swords in a film. They had all the metal workers in Spain making these swords and chain mail and armor. And when you can see when they're they're fighting with these things, they're like... <laughs> <laughs> you know? It, it has a substance to it <laughs> yeah all these actors that are not at, particularly at that time uh not actually used to slinging around weight no and, and they always they always like they never looked like they went and did any working out in the gym yeah you, you know what i'm yeah. saying you see these guys and they, they had arms like little boys you know kind of like thing yeah in the big it, barrel it, chest yeah you know it was kind of weird anyway but this <laughs> I put the cool down and then you brush some of the that red. Yeah, the question becomes like I'm I'm extrapolating it from this, but you really you can't really see it that well in there. So I'm enhancing okay. it. So it's not like a copy photograph. It's not even I mean this is definitely copied from that point of view that that's here's the photo and there's the picture, but I'm not using every thing like this. I've gotta I wanna enhance this a bit and bring the the bounce light back up higher into here, you know? Yes. And the question well, becomes, you're, you're not creating, you're not doing a digital a photo realistic of a digital print. No, I'm not. That's not what, that's not what you're doing. Yeah. And so then, this, the thing about this is interesting. You see, you get into this idea of the hand and as always in the movies, you know, like the stop motion films are Ray Harryhausen. Jason and the Argonauts with all the skeletons fighting and everything. Incredible animation mm -hmm. sequence. But how the hell is this, how is it held together? There's no sinews anymore. You show a skeleton hanging and they always show them in one piece back in the old movies. Like, yep. how did they get clung together, you know? What's yeah. whole, <laughs> what's whole... <laughs> So this is sort of like, all this stuff is really suspended in a way. So there's something yes. more supernatural about it some weird thing you know what i'm saying yeah uh did you when you would do your original sketches have you ever used butcher's paper yeah not lately i haven't long past yeah no okay is that a question from somebody or just you yes yeah from alexander Davin devonport uh, so i have i have another question for you greg um going going back to the you know the the stark black background and just in yeah. your in your thinking process when you know we were talking before about the pinup series and Amer american beauties uh I, th I, th I believe you said your initial drawings and stuff were just the figures and then you you talking through with gene you came to the conclusion to make it you and part of making it you was including that background which is also what distinguishes your pinups from yeah. most of those pinups from, from the fifties and everything. Yeah. We got down. Now, did, you, yeah. did you have a, sorry, Greg. No, 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 no. My, my question for you was, 
did you have the reverse thought process of saying, okay, I'm doing backgrounds and then like, no, I, I want to take them out or like, how did you, how did you come to just no background impact? No yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. I did, I just think it came a visual thing. When I, when I shot that first picture of, of the first puppet that I painted, it, he was all against dark. I mean, when I when I when I when we printed the shot, okay, it's in my room where it's all very dark, and I said I like that because I mean, what should I put behind him? He's he's this ancient thing. Uh, as soon as you put some, if I was to include something behind this, what should it be, and where would it be? So he, then that, that becomes all the element that I'm not interested in with this. I'm only interested in this. Yeah. The same with the puppets. Yeah, in the yeah in the first one in the series, the Uncle Sam, I do believe that you had uh, like He's, a hard wooden wall yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it's on a it, shelf. And, and, it, and it's on a background. shelf in my room where I collect. I keep all those things that I that I got. Yeah, it was on that shelf when I shot the picture. And I, I kept it that. You know, I haven't looked at that for a while. Uh, I don't know if I would do that again. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But, yeah, but then, but once you once you went to, yeah, that. Uh, said the spider to the fly right that first it. puppet and, and and you know really that that puppet to me is kind of the defining piece of the series you know where yeah you you really kind of you know even though it's the, only the second one in the series you kind of found it's it's the first one you, well it's the, it's the very first one the I first guess. it's the first puppet but oh, yeah. painting and kid stuff. Right, right, right. Uncle Sam was the first way. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep. But you, yes. It, I, you're right. From from my perspective, from the perspective of a viewer. Yeah. Obviously not in your head. You hit your stride, like you like. Okay, here's the way I want to go. You know. Yeah. And like bam. Yeah. I I don't want to give any other. Th but he didn't give any thought to anything in the image other than that. Anything yeah. else becomes like some other aspect of storytelling that I'm not interested in with these. It just isn't there. I'm not saying it might, it couldn't get there if something goes, a light goes on. Yeah. But it happened. I don't want to say no to anything, you know? It's stupid to close any door. Yep. But so far, this is the way I'm, I'm doing it, you know? Good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah, oh, I I, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, no, it's something that I found personally found very interesting, and in, in that it was such a departure from everything, literally everything that you've done. Yeah, and I mean, saying that to a twenty-year-old is one thing, but saying that to somebody that has the body of work that you have, <laughs> you know, is is, is entirely different scenario yeah, it, it's re remarkable that you know where you're at in your stage of life you are still reinventing your approach to things yeah i it's there's just too much there's too much going on in the world for me to stick with one thing <laughs> Sometimes I used to think, well, maybe that was a problem because you didn't be, everybody, they used to have this conversation, you'll become an expert by landing on one thing and repeat, you know. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. It may be for some people. Uh, it's, well, I mean, you've certainly nailed it for medium, you know, you know, but you, you've not just, you're not stuck with one particular subject matter. You know, right. yeah, I mean, you focused, you focused on subject matter uh, for extensive periods of time, mm -hmm. you know, whether, you know, like, you know, Lord of the Rings, you were involved in that for what, three years? Yeah, three years. You know? And then a lot of your commercial work was fantasy yeah. driven, you know, yeah. and then you hit the classics and you focused in on that world mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. Pinups, you know, you focused in on. Yeah, I'm still but, doing that. You know, those come up within in those worlds, you know, you're not like, okay, it's 
this one thing in this one scenario from blah 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 blah. You right. know, you're really you're really pulling it. But again, from an observer's point of view and someone that is familiar with while I can't say everything that you've ever done. Yeah. I'm certainly familiar with a significant portion of your body of work. Uh, mm-hmm. to, to me, man, these, the, this series is, is the problem. best, is the best stuff you've ever done. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and I'm not taking away from Lord of the Rings. I know, not, I know, I know, I know, I know, I got it. Not taking away from any of that. It, it, you really, this, this stuff strikes a chord with me that, uh, you, that your commercial stuff doesn't do. Yep. The, yeah. The commercial stuff yeah. doesn't do again, not take it away from well, it, your dream images. Your you know, the, yeah, all the dream image stuff that you do. This has the same effect for me. Yeah. And it's, I, I Thank appreciate you. your mind coming through as an artist rather than your interpretation of Spider-Man. Yeah, I got it. I What's hear wrong you. with that? No, I, What's I, wrong I, with I, that? I, John I, pays the bills, but it, it, it's I, like, I particularly enjoy the mind of the artists. Yeah. And, well, it's personal. This is all very personal. That's why, that's what it is. It's a very personal thing to me, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, Yeah, so you know everybody watching this right now seriously if you have not spent any time looking at greg's kid stuff series really do yourself a favor <laughs> do yourself a favor and 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 find it it is amazing it's amazing work yeah, I, I, I got a whole bunch of them planned i've shot pictures already you know so we'll, we'll do them on and off i don't know what i'm going to jump to next i'm going to finish this in a couple of days I would say two more days of tickling. I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it. You know, I want to just clean some. I'm getting more tickly, a little more texture on stuff yep. and highlighting certain areas. You know. Yeah. The thing is to know when to stop. Were you Were you erasing white pencil there? Is that what you're yeah. doing? What were you doing? Yeah, white pencil. Because I'll draw stuff in with a white pencil to get it in. You know, you've seen some of it there. Then you can just erase mm-hmm. it off. The, the other thing I would recommend to everybody watching other than the kids stuff, is uh, the, the dream, your dream paintings. Highly recommend everybody check out Greg's dream paintings. Uh, they're a little tougher to find on the website, but to just give you an example, uh, the Mob Rules Crucifiers cover was originally a dream image. And, uh, you know. Some dream. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic stuff, man. Yeah, I, you know, look at, I've got like a, a lot of that stuff that I've sketched out over the years too, that I keep saying, I'm going to get to one of those, I'm going to get to one of those. And, you know, at some point I'll get to it. But there's so much yeah. stuff, so many things and that uh, you can't, I don't think you ever lived long enough, obviously, to think that you were arrived at anything. Yes. Well, you don't know, we don't know what's on the other side. No. I hope so there's Maybe a, you'll get another chance. I hope so. Right. I'm, I'm open going. to that. I'm definitely open to that possibility. And yes. that in that next one, I'll get it right. Maybe. What is, is that so uh isn't that like Nirvana? Is that you're you're trying to reach the state of Nirvana where you've you've got it right, you know? Yeah. Everything? I mean, and that's it with painting. That's what that's that look, I started to write, you know, like just for my own exercise. What do you want in a painting? This is me talking to myself. Okay. Not a painting for someone else or, or something else, but for you and you alone, let come what may. All right, so I can list obvious things. What do I want in that painting? Good composition, good lighting, good drawing, good color. Should I try for new composition, new lighting and color? What is it that really, if it was the last thing in the world that I would ever draw or paint, what would it be? There it is. I know I've got only so much time to go. What would it be? What's the subject? Is it personal, like a dream or, is, or experience? Is it symbolic? Is it surreal? 
Is it realistic? Is it spiritual? What's the objective? Shock, awe, sorrow, fear, anger, befuddlement, happiness, joy, transformation? Should it be intellectual, emotional, political? Should it be thought provoking? Should I approach it stream of consciousness or subconsciousness and not try to make sense out of it at all? Just let it happen. Just start. Throw some paint on the canvas. This kind of thing. It's a combination of everything I've done. Is it a combination of ever, uh, that I've ever done or, or is it what I've never done? Is it past, present, and future? What do I love the most? What do I, what do I despise the most? Should I even think of composition, drawing, color, design, perspective, lighting? God damn it, yes. I'm not talking about abandoning all I've learned. I'm talking about synthesizing it all. I'm talking to myself, you see. You ever do that? That's, it's good to do. It's phenomenal, man. Thank you for sharing that. It's, but you know, you, your mind goes like trying to land on that thing that will be it. And then I, by the end of that, I got like that, what I did, I, I talk and I talk and I says, start back at the beginning. So you can start back and you start to read it all over again, because that's all that is. <laughs> and then finally, yeah. you just like, it hit me after I did that, like, the thing that you're doing give that that's it right there that's it just there think of that and be that and have it be that it's a way to survive yeah. anyway that's fantastic <laughs> now adrian wagner now i know what greg does when he sets down to smoke a joint <laughs> no not any more of i i uh <laughs> Too old for any of that shit anymore. Yeah, you probably haven't done that. And... I have not done that uh, for 40 or 50 years, and I'm not drink alcohol, and I don't, I'm, there's no lecture against alcohol. Don't don't anybody take me wrong. You know, do what you will. But I, it just got to a point that was it. It's like I used to talk a lot with uh, various musician friends that, you know, in the business that it's an addictive nature that we all have as artists. You got to be really careful. You gotta be, yeah. You gotta yeah. be really careful because it's like, it's it, it, you're you're you're. He calls it addiction, Paul. It, you know, you're it, this. I'm addicted to this, you know. And it, you really are. It's, it's an obsessive, compulsive, driving need that you have to do art, and that can cross over into other materials, you know. And you gotta be yes. careful. Yep. And yep. thanks to Gene, I was able to abandon all that shit. And besides, <laughs> you know, yeah, really. You know, you need incredibly to have someone like that that can get, get you through it. The thing is, I realized too that as I was doing that stuff, my, my painting and drawing was getting horrible. That's, you know, really, we, when you and I talked about it one time, and if, if you want to fill in the details of, of the painting it was and all that, you can. Uh, I won't. But I remember you saying that you did it. And you totally screwed up the perspective on the piece. You got lost in the perspective and you're like, yep, you know could, what? I'm done with that. Could, could, could not. It drew my horizon line. It was an illustration I was doing. I knew exactly where I'm looking at the scene from. You know, you got to know that when you're doing representational setups. Where's your camera angle? Are you looking up? Are you looking down? Are you looking you know, crotch level, knee level, belly level? Where are you looking at? I drew the line. I knew I was going to be right stomach level with these particular care. That's it. I know where I'm at. I know where the horizon is. I know where the buildings are in the distance. I know what's coming at me. And I drew the line. And I sat back. Whatever that length of time is. Got back. Could not figure out where in the goddamn hell I was looking at the scene from. Even though it's solid. Draw the line. Do an H, horizon line. I do that with a circle. H, tsh, tsh, draw it right down the horizon line. So, no, that's where my horizon line is. I could not get it. <laughs> it was born. I just could not. I getting into a freak out panic attack. And I said, that's it. Screw this crap. This is it. <laughs> this is insane. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, people that are saying that they uh, love Greg's philosophical side. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, someone had a question earlier that I wanted to ask you and I forgot to ask, I think. What is your favorite toy? Do you have a favorite toy? 
And have you painted it yet? No. That does not take as a favor. Nope. <laughs> nope. It's like, oh. no. You it's like people love them all what's, equally. What's your favorite painting you've ever done? I, I, and I stole George Powell's line again, the guy that I admire from the films and, that he made in the 50s. My next one, they would always ask him, what's your favorite picture that you've made? My next one. Yeah. It's, it's like that. The, the, next, the next toy, I can't answer that. Maybe it'll be the next one that I get. I don't know. I like them all. Did you have a favorite from when you were a kid? Did you have a favorite? I, one I haven't gotten yet. There you might go. That, that's not necessarily <laughs> my favorite now. It was, <laughs> it was a, I was, I remember vividly. I was in the, in JL Hudson's. I'm from Detroit. JL Hudson's was, was the Detroit's Macy's. It was like a fantastic department store with a huge Christmas land in Santa Claus, like in a Christmas story, you know, that yeah. whole thing going on and walking down the aisles and going by the, 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 the ray guns. And there was a flash Gordon that I, I can still remember what, exactly what it looked like. And I wanted it. And I started freaking. I must have been like I don't know, six years old. I don't know, seven, seven years old. Wait, a Flash Gordon figure or a Flash Gordon Flash ray, gun? ray gun? Oh, wow. And it was a short, stubby, round, red one. It wasn't a really long thing. It was it had this weird, strange, circular, uh, uh, you know. Anyway, and so maybe that one. You know. Maybe I'll get that one someday. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe Santa will bring it next year. Hopefully, <laughs> Sanity Claus. But I mean, look at I, I. It's like this stuff is. Uh, I appreciate it when I had it, and I appreciate it now. You know, very cool, man. But um, again, yeah, dude. Thank you so much for sharing the stuff. Thanks for painting with us today. We're almost at five o'clock already. Good guys, uh, flies when you're having fun. Yeah, and. So as as always, it's a pleasure talking with you, sir. And I'm here, uh, I truly enjoy it. And everybody that is watching now, thank you all very much for tuning in. Seeing a lot of familiar faces. Truly, truly appreciate that. Um, so if you like what we do, please, you know, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, uh, you know, like what we're doing, comment on everything, share it around with your friends, do all the stuff that they tell you to do. Because uh, right now we're doing it because Greg is enjoying it, right? Huh. Well, I mean, I enjoy yeah. going to the conventions, which of course we're not doing anymore, and talking with people and just having fun with people. And uh, yeah, but I love it when people comment and make say stuff and ask questions. I think it's it's a it's a great thing. Yeah, and yeah. and please, if anybody has any uh, you know suggestions or thoughts, what they would like to hear us talk about any questions that you want Greg to answer, um, you know, drop a comment or whatever. Uh, we would truly appreciate it. And thank Jean's you. here to turn the machine off. Jean's here to All turn right. the machine She's the electronics <laughs> expert on this end. <laughs> All right. Oh, this so little everybody... chromium switch. Where is it? Uh, I don't, North Free says, are we going to lose online, Greg, after COVID? He'll hit the cons. Uh, we don't know that yet, right? We're still no, we haven't made up our mind about that. No, I'll tell you. I'll answer that. Gene knows. No, we're definitely okay, going to stay right, Okay, we, ha we got the answer from Gene. Okay. No, no abs you We're absolutely going to stay. We're absolutely going to stay online. There you go. I like these live, live streams. I like them. I like doing them, man. I, it, it, they're fantastic, and I love people watching them. I like the questions, and I like... I like to pass along information that I may have for artists. I love to inspire people if hopefully that's the ultimate, you know, yep. to, uh, to pursue whatever it is they're pursuing, you know. There you go. Guess awesome. we answered that. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Adios, amigo.